Hello, and welcome to day 12 of our Osteoporosis Awareness Challenge. Today, we'll be talking about supplements. Supplements are a subject that could become a workshop or a class all on their own. Supplements can be complex, and they can also take quite a long time to discuss and to go over. The videos that are coming out for this challenge are designed to be short in nature. That said, I'm gonna share a brief overview of some of the most frequently used supplements and provide a free list that you can download from the description of this video to use as a quick reference guide. So if you're interested in diving into the topic of supplementation in depth, please let me know in the comments and I may circle back around to discussing it as a workshop or as a series of long form videos at a later date. Let's begin with calcium. You've likely heard that you should and also that you should not take calcium supplements for bone health. Too much calcium can contribute to developing calcification of the arteries, but this doesn't mean that we should throw the baby out with the bath water. Calcium supplementation can be helpful. It's just important to make sure that we don't get too much of it. I'll link in the description to a free calculator that you can use to track how much calcium you consume on average in a day. There will be variances based on what you eat, but I encourage you to track this for several days to a week and then figure out what you average. Your personal average will help you to determine whether or not you're getting the recommended 1200 milligrams of calcium daily. If you're short, you'll then know by approximately how much you're short and then you can supplement the right amount rather than potentially taking more than you need. The best type of calcium to take is calcium hydroxyapatite. This form can be a little bit difficult to find. Another good form that's easier to find is calcium citrate. The citrate helps our bodies to better absorb the calcium that we take. Magnesium is another common supplement. The general rule of thumb is that you want to take about half as much magnesium as you do calcium. Doctors used to recommend taking calcium and magnesium together, but newer research suggests that calcium and magnesium may actually compete for absorption, making it better to split these supplements up if you can. Magnesium citrate is also a good form of magnesium to take. Vitamin D3 is important for many people to take. 40% of adults are deficient in vitamin D. We can get vitamin D from fatty fish like salmon and also from the sun, but it's still likely that we're going to need to do some supplementing of vitamin D. Taking a D3 supplement is the best choice because that's the form that our bodies use. Since it's a fat soluble vitamin, it's possible to get too much vitamin D and it's important to make sure that you're getting the right amount for your body. I encourage you to have your vitamin D checked every year with your doctor. If you have enough vitamin D stored in your body, the recommended daily maintenance amount is 800 international units daily. If you're like me and among the 40% of adults who are deficient, then you may wanna take a larger amount. Talk to your doctor about what this amount is for you. In general, 2000 international units is a safe amount to take daily, but I would encourage caution in taking anything over 5000 international units daily. Since vitamin D is, fat, is a fat-soluble vitamin, it's also helpful to take it with a healthy fat from your diet so that it's better absorbed. Vitamin K2 is another great choice for supplementing for bone health. It pairs well with vitamin D, and if you can find the right amounts, you might even want to take them in the same supplement. The two play well together. The daily recommended amount of vitamin K2 is about 100 to 120 MCG daily. Many of you have heard that vitamin K2 can help to reduce calcification of the arteries, and this is true. It's a bit of a quiet star in the world of bone health. It's also important to recognize that vitamin K2 may not be appropriate for everyone. It's involved in the coagulation process of our bodies. And if you take warfarin or Coumadin or another blood thinner, it may not be appropriate for you. So talk to your doctor or pharmacist or both. Also, if you're taking vitamin K2, look for the MK4 or MK7 form. MK7 lasts longer in the body, but both of these forms are good. All right. That's quite a bit to be going on with for today about supplements. I hope that this information is helpful. And if you're interested in the free download reference guide for supplementing bone for bone health, it's available in the description for this video. 
So coming back to our osteoporosis awareness challenge, today I want to invite you to have a look at the supplements that you currently take. Are they what you actually need? Are they the best supplements for your situation, body, and lifestyle? Have an inventory day to see what you have and how things are going with supplements. And on that note, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.